30 years ago, and that was a very ambitious launching of uh, fighting against climate changes. And today, 30 years later, the situation is worse. Can we still save the planet and uh, still have growth, achieve growth, or do we need to uh, really go to have sacrifices? What's, uh, what was uh, happened? What happened this morning really illustrates uh, a uh, general problem problematic. There is a consensus in France to say that, OK, we have a collective responsibility uh, for future generations and for the, uh, the destiny of humanity on this planet. And at the same time, we have this terrible frustration of inaction. Uh, Rio conference, it was 1992, it was 30 years ago. And now we are emitting 50% uh, uh, more uh, CO2. So, so we are on a uh, on the wall. We're going to find a wall, and we keep on speeding up towards this wall rather than uh, breaking. So, but in Europe, it's better, isn't it? A little positive note here. Well, in Europe, okay, we uh, have reduced our CO2 emission by 20 percent, but uh, that's really, that's 20 percent, that's ridiculous uh, compared to the evolution of CO2 throughout the world. But we have uh, addressed uh, a very, very strong objective of 55 percent reduction of emission compared to 1992. So in 30 years, we have managed uh, 20 minus 20, and now we need to reduce minus uh, by minus 35 percent. And in 2050, we need to uh, really reduce the last emissions on the European continent. We're really far from our objective. So we have this frustration against inaction. And at the same time, there's a terrible shock we have to face, which is the will to go to do it and to have sacrifices. Uh, we need to have a will, sacrifices of companies, cons consumers. We hear a lot about innovation, new technologies, changes of behavior, rationalization of production. But we haven't said we can change our style of life. Uh, maybe we go from a car to the uh, cycle for small uh, uh, trajects. Uh, small journeys, sorry, uh, but uh, do we have to wait uh, the solution from technology or do we have to change our lifestyles? Oh, uh, well, we'll have to uh, really f have financial sacrifices uh, also uh, if we speak about mobility, uh, uh, go from uh, a uh, individual car to uh, collective transport uh, implies uh, higher, longer transportation uh, time. So who is ready to uh, make sacrifices? Nadia Pelfik this morning said that this movement last year of students uh, who demonstrated uh, of uh, iTech group saying we need to go further to really attack uh, and go uh, uh, very strongly uh, uh, in the, the way we live, the way we produce, we need to go for it. But the question is, there is a consensus, let's go for it, but no one does it and we don't know how to go about it. Between uh, uh, CIR BNP and uh, we're going to give him uh, the floor. But now for new technologies, we're saying in the interview that we are really far, far away from our objective for uh, new technologies, uh, for them to be competitive uh, compared to old models. Electrical car, for example. Yes, OK, we don't use uh, coal anymore. That's uh, really uh, something really urgent now because uh, also we have uh, uh, these uh, heating pumps uh, to, uh, for boilers to be replaced with uh, fuel boilers. And uh, ca carbon captation is very expensive. With today's technology, to have zero emission, net zero, would imply a, 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 a really a, a lacking of growth. Uh, uh, it would be a terrible revolution, uh, considerable uh, lack of growth, uh, not just for our purchasing power, but for many other. Uh, 
so between uh, the end of the world or the end of the month, where do we put our cursor? How do we reduce our CO2 emission? How do we do it? Who is going to pay? We uh, speak about uh, we're going to reduce it by minus uh, uh, 55. We talk about investment and costs. Can we say, are we going to reduce purchasing power? Because it is uh, uh, families who are paying. We talk about 50 to 70 billion euros of additional cost per year to uh, f reach the objectives. It's going to be all really a debate on carbon tax. Antoine Sir, you are uh, director of uh, a committee uh, for the uh, for, uh, BNP, wants to be a, a leader of uh, green financing. What is your uh, idea of uh, defending planet? How we, can we really have both uh, growth? Uh, uh, as a uh, act, private actor, do you believe in it? Good morning to everyone. And uh, can we have, uh, can we mix uh, degrowth or growth and neutral uh, carbon impact? We need to change our modes of life or our way of working or aspirations. We need to get into a transformation movement that is really deep. Uh, I think it is very difficult today to say exactly what is going to be the scope of this uh, transformation. But I think it's going to be very important. I think, too, that we need to be ready and very uh, aware of all the uh, transformation that implies on all uh, modes of lives. And we need to be very aware of the big efforts we'll have to make in the years to come so that this transformation happen in a acceptable concept of uh, social justice because we live in countries where uh, we have uh, social differences uh, uh, and in parallel with the climate uh, issues and uh, lack of biodiversity there's also an increase of uh, social uh, inequalities inequalities sorry is it a BNP issue? For you, uh, social problems. How do you, how do you, uh, how, what do you do to um, get uh, involved into these uh, issues? We consider that we transform the operating uh, mode of the company so that we can integrate in all of our decision uh, environmental and social criteria. So we have, uh, we take all of our activities. When you're really in the main action, it's difficult to do everything because we need to really uh, learn things. But it's difficult to do everything uh, simultaneously. Uh, there's um, an element, uh, I understood that. I just, we can talk about your own commitment to reduce uh, greenhouses, uh, Gauss. BNP has a 5% ambition uh, growth, 5% it's a lot, so you're going to also participate, participate to this greenhouse gas effects increase. But how can BNP act for social inequalities because uh, the measures are taken? How are you going to act concretely? We are agnostic uh, for, uh, in your documents you are saying 5%. We have uh, gained very important uh, market shares in companies, so our objective is to gain customers. Uh, it's through customers and through market shares, and it's completely. Uh, it doesn't have any carbon impact. Uh, it's not uh, mechanic mechanically linked uh, to economic growth. Between BNP Paribas uh, growth uh, and economic growth in the sense uh, that we uh, understand it in macroeconomics. Second point, we have many mechanisms that are really excluding people, uh, people who ha don't have access to a mortgage, 
uh, to uh, the banking system to creating a company and we give them solutions to create a company but they don't take into account the uh, the need to develop uh, greener models there's a huge part today of the uh, feeding uh, chain uh, and uh, agricultural chain and they are in the hands of small uh, farmers and they don't have access to financing and they don't have access to have uh, access to a, a more sustainable uh, agricultural system in Senegal in the north of Senegal you are in the region uh, where in, uh, they have uh, they are very highly impacted by uh, uh, global warming and uh, 15 farmers have developed more reasonable uh, sustainable uh, agricultural procedures and uh, the wa the way they are working those uh, farmers they're women farmers and they can't be financed by banks because uh, they only have access to microfinance. So we're working with them to see what are the conditions to see uh, how they could have access to real banking uh, systems and not be excluded from uh, the financial world. It is a very radical example. We could talk about the contract pack, social, many other experimentations that we're carrying out. And uh, we have uh, experimentation labs to create uh, financial mechanisms, financial products that allow them not to be excluded. It uh, implies technology, uh, uh, i.e. Uh, artificial in intelligence. And uh, if it is well used, it also fights against exclusion from the financial system. Mr. Canfin is going to talk about carbon tax which is at the heart of our uh, topic here. I want you to ask you about uh, green financing systems. BNP is on the trajectory where they're not going to uh, finance uh, carbon native industries. You, you have, uh, uh, you're not committed with coal industry, etc. But it's going to be more and more difficult. But as John Riskin said in the New Deal, is finance is going to uh, completely transform economy because finance is really the more uh, carbonated industry. Do you think there's going to be a swap via financing systems with funds that will not uh, uh, finance any more carbonated industry? Do you think it's a very strong leverage? Yes, uh, uh, with uh, sustainable investment uh, chair, uh, they work with uh, f financial funds, uh, and uh, it is very important. The uh, disinvesting we uh, can see for the past 20 years, that really uh, uh, increases the cost of capital for not responsible companies, can really help uh, these brand companies to uh, and can contribute to uh, have a, uh, an, a greener economy. It is a leverage somehow. So you need to take this into account. When you look at uh, tobacco industry, uh, fight against uh, uh, tobacco consumption and uh, smoking, it's not uh, uh, the fact that uh, we didn't uh, invest in Philip Morris. It is the fact that uh, public uh, powers have uh, exerted their power to uh, tax uh, and to impose uh, taxes uh, uh, so that consumers, uh, smokers, could see the real uh, cost for them and for society of uh, this production and of this consumption. And that helped. And that's, what, uh, that's uh, how it happened. Uh, and uh, that's how uh, smoking uh, in France and Europe um, decreased. Uh, climate change is not everything. It is, of course, the, the worst failure of uh, markets in the history of humanity. It is a failure, and we need to uh, think of how we adapt. What is the alternative? We're going to uh, now come to the uh, uh, carbon tax. What is the uh, market failure? And how can we find new tools to really counter attack? When you emit CO2, CO2 you're not integrating. You cause the, the societal damages you are inflicting. So the result is that 
people are not really motivated to do uh, common goods, uh, to create too much pollution. How can we uh, resolve the problem? We have uh, lots of, uh, we can uh, speak about a decrease of growth. We can adapt the uh, market economy that really made the prosperity of the Western world for many centuries now. We can adapt this uh, market economy to force actors, consumers, producers to integrate those climate uh, issues in their decision, in their investment choices, in their lifestyle, in their production modes. It's very easy to do. It creates a, 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 an issue of uh, acceptability or, and of financing and of uh, equality. But on the principle, we can say, let's apply the uh, principle of uh, if you pollute, you pay, so that uh, uh, private interests are in line with the common goods, uh, choosing uh, the level of the price of carbon so that it really shows and reveals the reality of the impact of carbon on society if we choose carbon. So then it compensates the difference, the differences between uh, geographical areas uh, which have imposed uh, taxes. You have different types of distribution. You talk about the world. Uh, at local level, we have lots of uh, very severe dif differences in terms of emission. Uh, the states is 17 tons of CO2 per year. In France, it's six tons. I think it should be nine if we talk about uh, imported emission. But in Africa, he, uh, the emission is less than one ton. And so in certain countries, it's 100 kilos per year per person. So the, uh, the Western world uh, is really responsible for this, for this CO2 emission and climate change. And of course, we need to make a difference between the financial sacrifices that are now asked to different uh, uh, to different inhabitants, and we can do it through different mechanisms. And for the it's a 26 COP, and we haven't found the solution. In Copenhagen in 2009, we talked about creating a, a green fund of 100 billion per year. We haven't done it to finance uh, energy, call, energy transition in developing developed countries, and we are not. Uh, we haven't reached this objective. So there's a frustration in front of inaction, and it's really at the same level of the fact that we uh, don't make sacrifices in uh, the Western world. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, your uh, ex -ministry, minister. You're now MEP for Air Renew, and your chairman of uh, Environmental Commission. It's a key uh, place, and you have a wonderful uh, action span. There is a big discussion that is um, pre being prepared today at Parliament to extend ta uh, carbon tax to transportation and to, uh, and to uh, residential. So you are not really in favor, as far as you are concerned, after the Gilets Jaunes Yellow Vests uh, crisis in France. Uh, you know, you uh, uh, changed a kind of gear. You changed gear. So uh, I'd like to know why uh, you are not in favor whereas uh, uh, Christian is uh, really in favor. So I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes, that's great. Uh, so good morning, everybody. Thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to talk today. Well, this uh, discussion, this uh, choice, actually, uh, is a kind of package uh, suggested by the European Commission and uh, discussed by all the member states and uh, the authority of the French presidency at the moment. Uh, we are about to define all the rules of the game for the whole continent in order to fight against uh, global change and to take uh, uh, acute actions uh, in the right direction. We have got uh, a toolbox made of standards, uh, CO2 standards for cars. In this respect, we are heading to the end of uh, 
geothermic vehicles, and we would like to turn to uh, a zero uh, CO2 emission by 2025. That means a huge uh, change in the, uh, in the car industry. Uh, that's a radical change, actually, strong radical change. As uh, well, when listening to the car manufacturers, we hear that we are talking about thousands of jobs about to disappear uh, due to the decisions you are mentioning. Answer, yes, uh, you, uh, you're right, but uh, the figures are not quite uh, so because there are winners and losers in, law, uh, in all this. Uh, microelectronics, for instance, based in uh, Grenoble, has a huge order book. They have become the world leader of a component to be used in uh, the new batteries. So there are always winners and losers, and especially in these transition periods, it's a Schumpeterian transition already experienced uh, in our uh, societies. Uh, can be properly uh, managed. Uh, we know how to uh, introduce uh, the right measures in order to apply uh, fair uh, decisions to the benefit of uh, the uh, salaried workers. And objectively speaking, we all actually know that's true that the order book is going to decrease for some categories of vehicles. Uh, in the car industry. We know this, of course, and uh, uh, but we are not going back into the past, and uh, we are not uh, returning to the age of carriages, horse carriages, you know. Uh, we have to be aware that some jobs, of course, uh, are at risk. Uh, and uh, uh, but and we will have to manage this transition socially, and uh, we also have to be aware of the fact that some of the uh, salaried workers involved uh, will re will have retired by then. But the dates I am uh, mentioning. So you have got winners, losers, and the possibilities of adaptation. Now, when it comes to uh, fuel. Uh, price. We are going to turn from um, 30, 30 euros per ton of CO2 to 80, 100 uh, euros per ton. This is going to please Mr. Grolier. When I say 80 euros per uh, ton of carbon, that means many economic models will have to think twice. Uh, the econ in, uh, in the cement industry, for example, it's going to, to, to kind of nibble uh, the, uh, the added value. So that means it's going to have major impact on economic mean models. So we have, of course, to introduce uh, adaptation mechanisms. Uh, I cannot tell ArcelorMittal that they're going to pay 100 euros a per ton and that their colleagues exporting uh, in the EU don't don't, uh, don't pay or won't pay a penny. That would be totally impossible, unbearable, unacceptable. So when introducing these new prices, 100 euros per ton of carbon, we will have to introduce adjustment mechanisms. This will done for the uh, air transport, maritime sea transport. We are the first to do this at world level. And by doing this, we will largely increase the uh, level uh, uh, that uh, the uh, carbon tax uh, uh, constitutes at business level. Now, this, what about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the same trend for households? Uh, just a question beforehand, if I may. Uh, uh, what is uh, what what does the sh private sector uh, account for it's difficult to say it's difficult to say uh, 
uh, Christian uh, says 40 percent. The answer by Christian is 40 percent. The answer given by Christian Grolier is for 40 percent. I'm not sure I have understood your question. It's 40 percent for Europe, for Europe. And you don't want to impose a carbon tax on this sector, am I right? No, well, let me be clear. Uh, many public policies are being changed, are being transformed, and uh, especially in the building and transport uh, industries and uh, uh, via standards, for instance, this is what I said concerning cars, is going to be uh, uh, also true for lorries, trucks, uh, by the end of the year. That means we are heading, heading for the end of uh, uh, the uh, actual, uh, the, the current uh, uh, lorry and trucks uh, uh, energies, and we want to head uh, for zero emissions in this sector too, in the truck lorry uh, uh, tra um, transport. That's. Uh, what relates to the new standards to be introduced. If you replace the uh, current uh, regulations, this is true for the building industry, when building new, uh, uh, new houses, uh, new flats, etc., and uh, uh, you have to introduce huge, huge, huge taxes up to uh, 500, 1,000 euros per ton of carbon. We won't be able to do this. Never, never. So, uh, and uh, uh, you would need a carbon price as 350, 500 euros uh, per ton. So, I mean, prices can do much in this respect. I mean, the amounts are too huge. So, standards seem to be a better approach, a good entry point, so to speak. So, now going back to households and the use of uh, uh, the uh, price of carbon to, in, to, to, to impact the household choices. La, let me introduce uh, the notion of ac acceptability in all these. Uh, uh, the uh, building brick of all these, if we want to have a peaceful debate, is to have social acceptability. If you have no social acceptability, no one is going to follow suit in the uh, private, public, or uh, uh, sectors and uh, uh, among our households. Now, what's the situation to date? Uh, now, just, uh, look at the uh, increase in energy prices uh, these days. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the, the amounts are huge. Uh, and uh, it uh, cannot, it won't be managed in the long run. So we have to be very careful, very cautious. And uh, uh, I'm about to, to win uh, because uh, at Parliament level. But we'll get back to this, I am sure. So, uh, Christian, what do you think? Taxes against standards, so to speak. Well, I have nothing against standards. I have nothing against obligations, uh, against bans. Of course, uh, if if uh, these uh, uh, public actions are analyzed and if the cost-benefit ratio is uh, de well closely analyzed, and uh, uh, let's not forget. Uh, that uh, we cannot yet uh, uh, build uh, uh, low CO2 emission aircrafts, for instance. And let's be careful with standards, norms, and the debate we're chasing power and accountability vis-a-vis uh, -vis the future of our planet. 
I think, I think uh, the system should make it possible to head for a reduction in carbon emissions at the least possible cost for society and especially for households. So, um, uh, the carbon tax may entice uh, pro, the, the, the manufacturers, the companies, the households to opt for uh, the uh, uh, less uh, expensive uh, products or choices in terms of carbon emission. Now, when saying minus 20% carbon emission in the last 20 years, it's mainly thanks to what happened in the industry and electricity sectors. Uh, and uh, so uh, let's admit that in the mobility sector, in the housing sectors, things are, uh, are a bit different because the carbon emissions have largely increased in these uh, latter uh, uh, two, in two sectors. And uh, uh, let's... Uh, at meet, uh, of course, that st norm standards uh, have been very useful in the past few years, especially in the car industry, for instance, and especially, of course, in terms of carbon emission. Uh, shall I mention the uh, diesel gate here? No, I won't. But if you entice people to buy a more e efficient uh, cars uh, from uh, the energy viewpoint, uh, you entice people to travel more. Uh, my car is less expensive, so I'm going to use it uh, to, 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 to go on holiday instead of uh, uh, traveling by train. So we have to be very careful. Let's uh, uh, also recognize we have been the only uh, world region um, in in terms of uh, uh, credibility and stability. I mean, when I say we have been the first ranking region in the world in terms of uh, credibility and stability, uh, in terms of implementing uh, relevant measures. Now, uh, extend extending the carbon price to new sectors uh, is another issue. Uh, what about the norms to be introduced and uh, implemented? Uh, what uh, does this mean? Uh, let's not forget uh, the price paid by the manufacturer um, to, to uh, manufacturers who have uh, uh, manufactured uh, cars or build the houses and in the end in the end who is going to pay who is going to foot uh, the, the final bill that's uh, the consumers so we have to find something which kind of strike a balance between uh, the social acceptance uh, uh, the future of the planet uh, and the needs uh, of uh, uh, the uh, industry. So, no, no question. It seems uh, by our friend, by Pascal. Can you hear me properly? Yes. Uh, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, how do react? As Christian said, as Christian said in his interview, is it possible to impose on Europeans very strict rules? at a time when the whole world emits many more, uh, uh, much more uh, carbon? And what about uh, the ethical responsibility of Europe? What about the uh, uh, their uh, historical uh, responsibility? Can you hear me well? Yes, we can. 
So without going into the details, because uh, I'm a bit short of time, and you know that I disagree with Christian, of course, but uh, I would like to insist on the fact that uh, a company makes gains, productivity gains, which is not the case for households. There is a real difference in nature. Uh, when a, a company is given a carbon signal or is imposed a carbon signal, and I open a parenthesis, this is a whole history of capitalism, and I close my parenthesis, we have made huge productivity gains uh, uh, and throughout history. Now, let's take the household. When you uh, uh, drive your kid uh, to the kindergarten, you are not making any productivity gain if you take your car or if you take a bike, etc. And uh, mm, so I am deeply convinced that the price signal is a right signal. Moreover, I'm sure that we do not we mustn't have a single uh, carbon price. We have to be very careful uh, with this. It's not the same for fertilizers, cement, etc. So what we are discussing together with the European Commission and what we are about to do very quickly, if, if, even uh, before the others, we are uh, dealing what we call carbon contract differences. Uh, and uh, we are doing this in order to give a right uh, and an appropriate incentive. This is what we are heading to. And it's a really powerful tool. And this is what we are deploying at a European level. We are working on this with Arsenal Metal for green hydrogen, etc. Now, when it comes to households, I am thinking of other measures. And uh, I would recommend uh, the leasing system for electric cars. Why? Norm standards are not enough. And uh, the electric car is, of course, uh, deploying, but not in a uh, kind of uh, equal manner. That's why, that's why I think transition should uh, be achieved uh, in the right manner, you know. And uh, for both for social and, and environmental reasons, uh, uh, we cannot ignore the people who are uh, less privileged, such as uh, the yellow vest. We have to be very careful with this. Yellow vest people do, do use their cars and do need uh, uh, them to go to car to to work. Sorry, and. Uh, uh, I think that uh, the leasing system for zero emission cars would be the right solution for less privileged households. That means that people buying second-hand cars uh, valued at three, four, five thousand euros will have the opportunity to access uh, to electric cars since they will just pay the, uh, the amount of the leasing. Uh, of the the amount uh, the monthly amount of uh, leasing this will be very efficient from a social ecological and industrial viewpoints and this without having uh, a carbon tax and without running a, a political risk what you're saying is highly interesting but we are running behind the schedule uh, Europe is a kind of headlight to the world from the environmental viewpoint. Uh, doesn't always uh, uh, decide on measures uh, which will be accepted by uh, uh, the populations. 
I mean, uh, one ton of CO2 emitted in China has exactly the same value as one ton of CO2 emitted in France or elsewhere in Europe. So that's why we are fighting, uh, fighting very hard day after day to have international cooperation agreements such as the Paris agreements. But we must also have. Uh, rapport de force relationships and uh, uh, depends uh, how you look at other countries but uh, we want uh, we will no longer sign agreements uh, with uh, let's say major industrialized countries if they contribute to deforestation or if they pollute uh, uh, too much the planet and emit too much carbon. What gives strength and value to our market is the fact that we have a single market. Of course, we are weak in terms of uh, uh, defense from a political viewpoint, but we are much, much better when it comes to the environment and to the economy. We have got a huge, huge power in this respect, and this power is uh, uh, now uh, being used to the benefit of uh, uh, the protection of the environment. And we're excellent in terms uh, of fossil fuel emissions and use. And uh, we are the world region in which we, there are the large, there is a largest number of uh, uh, zero carbon emission patents. So we are excellent, are going in the right direction. Direction. Uh, elsewhere in the world, in the States, uh, things are more complex, more complicated. So we do contribute to lessen cost to show the way this is our responsibility. We're accountable for this, uh, and uh, this is the way we want to go. Thanks very much for taking part in this uh, session and uh, for detailing uh, the uh, issues. Bye-bye. Uh, and uh, we have got a lot, a lot of questions on the uh, web, on the internet. You have defined the zero carbon goal. Uh, and you have made a huge effort when it comes uh, to uh, the production of coal. How are you going uh, to overcome the future obstacles and to turn to the next steps in order to turn to a fully green finance? That was a, a question to our finance people who were online a while ago, and uh, we cannot hear them. I think the mic, his mic was not on. So, uh, finance will go green, will go green. Uh, if society uh, can become green too, uh, we are going to try to contribute uh, to orient, uh, to orientate uh, the monetary flow, uh, monetary flow, sorry, into the right direction. And we have to stop uh, uh, heading for the wrong directions. When there are solutions, um, the implementation must be accelerated and the available solutions must not remain often and uh, have to be introduced. And the uh, bad solutions, uh, if I can say so, will have to be discarded. Uh, let me go back to the example of the leasing mentioned by your colleague. I find it uh, excellent. Uh, we are not going to make decisions uh, that the state has to take, but we will try to distribute our financial pr products in the same, in, in, in a better way. 
and we are working on the fossil fuel sector. We will have to work on farming and agriculture. You know that agriculture and farming are facing drastic, stringent problems, and we will have to find the appropriate solutions to help farmers. And uh, uh, that means uh, that means uh, if there are uh, some possible solutions, if finance can help, uh, we have uh, to do it. That means appropriate uh, decision-making chains, appropriate metrics, appropriate uh, criteria. And all this means a huge transformation in our organization models. BNP has been uh, on the market for 200 uh, years now, and we we didn't have these uh, criteria in the past. We have to uh, uh, to change everything altogether in terms of criteria. We have to revisit uh, uh, all uh, these criteria in order to be able to support uh, the uh, entities uh, when needed. And we will try and do our best first uh, to, to, to encourage uh, the companies to avoid acting wrongly uh, in terms of uh, uh, environment protection, let's say. Uh, for instance, we are no longer funding in the Tobank tobacco company now. Uh, this is just an example. And I'm, I would say that everything is closely interrelated, actually. Uh, thanks very much for taking part uh, in this session. Uh, discussing who can do what. Uh, you are about uh, to conclude a session, but we are going to give the floor to uh, all these uh, young people. Just, uh, Alors, just uh, an update un here. We have uh, had several interruptions uh, this morning by uh, young demonstrators uh, and uh, a group of uh, uh, young people are here with us, and we would like uh, you to uh, introduce yourselves. And uh, we are giving you three minutes to express uh, your views. And, uh, uh, and uh, Christian Grolier will give uh, will give you uh, an answer. So three minutes. Et très franchement, euh, je veux dire, on pouvait poser ces and you have the mic, and we are going to translate uh, this people. Uh, we are in the COP21. Uh, we are several young people here uh, to, 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 to fight against uh, the greenwashing. Uh, what we are here to, uh, to say uh, that Mr. Grolier has made valuable propositions in his report. Some of uh, these propositions have been handed to the President, the French President, Mr. Macron, and uh, we are convinced uh, you, you expressed very interesting uh, possibilities such as encouraging the short circuits, for instance, and we decided to act all together in order to overcome the obstacles and dangers, uh, uh, we, we will introduce, we may introduce the dangerous decisions for our comfort, but valuable decisions for the future. And uh, we have also uh, be aware of the necessities of need for encouraging and helping less privileged populations in the household and you have brought a very interesting points in the report, and uh, Mr. Gaulier, and uh, we have a lot of discussions about the decline of 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 the
Et donc, c'est pourquoi nous sommes ici pour remercier Mr. Grolier. En fait, vous savez, nous sommes très heureux de voir tout ce que vous avez écrit, ce que vous avez suggéré. Nous sommes en ligne avec beaucoup de propositions européennes au sein de TSE. Et juste pour terminer, je laisse la parole à mon collègue qui va avoir aussi une petite word. Merci. As, uh, euh, comme on nous a demandé de nous dire qui nous sommes, nous sommes ANV COP21, action, action non violente, non violente, non violente action. This uh, is a group of people. We are a group of people uh, conducting non violent, non violent. On aurait pu attendre uh, les séances de questions-réponses, mais jusqu'ici, on n'a pas eu uh, de questions-réponses. Uh, we could have waited for the Q&A session, et nos but since there was no Q&A session, we decided to insist and to come here. Nous, on pas pu uh, faire cette today on several occasions to voice our opinion. Oui, Thanks a merci lot. beaucoup. Uh, We uh, 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 already shared. Excuse me. We shared our views with all the consumers, members of society in the past, and we are quite willing to go on doing it over lunch, perhaps. Thanks very much for reminding some of Merci my remarks, suggestions, and comments. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, I can uh, find you are, uh, I can see that you are frustrated. Uh, we are all agree on the fact that we have to go to go for it, to head for it. Uh, we are all agree on that. But how to do it? This is a question. All that is green is not good, actually. And uh, uh, doing away with coal uh, in Europe uh, uh, is something we have uh, to delve into, actually. We've got a two-minute break uh, before the next session.